When? Wait, hold on a second. Ma, the phone's for you. Hurry up. Hello? Yes, this is Betty. Yes, I can be there. Where do I go? Okay. I'll be there. Thank you. Bye. They want to give me a second interview. I'm going to get this thing. Yay, Ma! Have a cup of coffee. You deserve it. I'll drink to that. What? Hello. Yes, this is Regina. Yes, I can be there. One o'clock. Okay, thank you. What do you mean you can't make the meeting? Look, Alan, this is the third time in a row you've pulled this crap on me. I don't care if this is the only time you can get the premature ejaculators together. I just don't care. Alan? Alan! Damn, he's done it again. You mean Greenberg is a no-show again? You guessed it. What the hell? I, I'm sorry. Sit down and we'll get started. Does this mean we got the funding for the simulation program? As a matter of fact, it's a done deal. As soon as we get everything lined up, we should be ready to roll by the middle of next month. With or without Greenberg. Oh, that's great! Have we decided on the actresses yet? So far as I know, yes. That's why Alan called the meeting, and once you know it, he's a no-show. However, he did send over the information and the names of the two candidates that the uh, committee decided on. At least we're still in the loop. Yeah, uh, well, who are they? Out of the 163 applicants, the committee in Greenberg finally decided on two older retired actresses. Why old and why actresses? Well, because many of the patients we treat here are senior citizens. And they're being treated for some form of dementia or psychosis. And, since the two ladies are actresses, they have the ability to assume multiple personalities, right? Right. We may not be the first mental health unit in the country to launch a simulation program for residents and interns. But for us, it's a real pilot program. So where do we fit into this? What I need you to do is take the two simulator trainees and get them primed and ready for our first class of resident physicians. You mean Margaret and I are responsible for training the trainees? Look, I'm part of the training program as well as you and Margaret. If you got a bone to pick, take it up with the great Greenberg. He and the committee planned this whole thing. And so far as I know, neither one of these old sirens is an axe murderer. Well, that's a real endorsement. Well, can you tell us something about these candidates? You would have to ask me about that. Hold on. Okay. Regina. Reggie Russello. Imagine if Elaine Stritch and Luciana Pavarotti had had a love child. It could be Reggie. Hold that thought. Betty White. Betty White? You mean we got Betty White? Not THE Betty White. This Betty White likes to introduce herself as Betty White with a Y instead of an I. <laughs> she has a certain quality about her that if she were to look at an unflushed toilet, she would see a bouquet of roses. Sort of a little orphan Annie on speed with a twist of Godzilla. Greenberg has called them both in for tomorrow. And in the meantime, would you guys like to hear about what the P.E.s did? No. 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 so funny. I'm sorry. I, I just can't help myself. This cute little cat, 
doesn't want to go for a walk with its owner. So as soon as the owner puts a collar around its neck, it rolls over and plays dead. Then when he picks up the totally limp cat, it just rolls over in a heap again. It was one hilarious thing after another, but finally, the owner decided to take the collar off, and as soon as he did, the cat revived. It jumped up, and it ran away immediately. Here, take a look. No thanks, I think I'll pass. You gotta see this. No, really. You're gonna love it. All right. <laughs> I knew you were going to love it. <laughs> Get this thing away from me before I choke to death. It just goes to prove something. What's that? Some animals are smarter than some people. So it would seem. It's just so nice to have someone to talk to in the waiting room. I'm really a little bit nervous. I feel squirrely. <laughs> anyway, my name is Betty White with a Y instead of an I. Really? Well, I'm Snow White. And I have the seven dwarfs right here in my purse. Here's Dopey. Oh. And Sneezy. Oh. <laughs> you are so funny. Oh my goodness. I, I know who you are. I saw you do Electric the Met. You're Reggie Rosella and you have a wonderful voice. Thank you. <laughs> you know, now that I think about it, you really do look familiar. I know I've seen you someplace, I just can't remember where. Well, I did do some commercials where my body parts were conspicuous. Body parts? What do you mean? Remember the old legs commercial? All you could see were the dancing legs. Yeah. Two of those legs were mine. And then there was the famous Earthman's Funeral Home commercial. That was my right hand. It laid a rose on the coffin. What a pity. Somehow I missed that one. A lot of people did. But then I met my husband. I did a little bit of theater. We got married. I had two kids. And then when the kids were in middle school, I was able to do some more theater. And somewhere in between, I, I wrote to Naughty Nushnik. What about you? Well, before my debut at the... Wait! You wrote the Naughty Nushnik? Uh-huh. Go on, tell me more. Oh, that's incredible. Anyway, I paid a lot of dues. Small opera companies, regional theaters, then up and down, off-Broadway, till I was able to break into the chorus of the Met. You really wrote the Naughty Nushnik? And the rest was history. What do you do now to keep busy? I play and sing, mostly requests, at the uh, cocktails and more every Friday and Saturday night. What do you do to stay out of trouble? Ooh, well, I hand out free samples of teeny weeny weenies at the Shop and Save on the weekends. However, I'm temporarily unemployed now, and that's why I applied for this job. Tell me something. Why do you think they called us in? Well, it's one of two things. They're either going to say, I'm sorry, but you just don't fit the requirements for this job, which means we're too old. Or they'll say, you're hired because you're perfect for these parts. What do you think? I think we're perfect for the job. <laughs> yeah, well, Pollyanna, we're about to find out. Ah, oh, good morning, ladies. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Please come with me right here in my office. I want to thank both of you ladies for your patience and I want to get right down to what we've called you in for here, which is the decision as to which of you we want. And I can tell you that we would like both of you to become part of our newly formed simulators program here at the psychiatric unit. I told you so. Shh. The simulation programs have been conducted uh, in many major hospitals across the country for years in order to help 
train residents and interns. But this is the very first simulation program that's offered as training in a psychiatric unit of a major hospital. You mean we're going to be stimulating mental patients? Simulating, not stimulating mental patients. Uh, they seem to be pretty thoroughly stimulated already. This means that both of you will be going through a brief training program that will bring you up to speed on the various spectrums of psychoses. I can hardly wait. Me too, me too. Doctor, I hope you don't mind my asking, but uh, what made you decide to hire us? Well, I'm glad you asked that. We had 263 applicants for this job, and the fact that both of you had extensive theatrical mm -hmm. experience was a very important factor, really. But also, it's a fact that mental illness, if not treated, can only exacerbate as people get older. And so, your advanced age was a plus. And plus, in addition to that, this may have been the tiebreaker, neither of you has a criminal record. Oh, and we're old. Isn't that wonderful? Exhilarating. When do we start the training and where do we go? Well, let's see. Today's Friday and you'll need to go to room 202 in the main building on Monday at 10 a.m. And Dr. Dan Arista will meet you. Now, do you have any other questions? I'll think of one as soon as you leave, Doctor. Well, yes, and of course. And if you do, you just give me a call. And in the meantime, thank you for coming in so much. Great to have you on board, too. And, oh, uh, one more thing. You want to uh, have Dr. Arista is arranging for a fitting for your restraints. Uh, the straight jackets. Mind if I sit down? No, go ahead, be my guest. Beautiful day, isn't it? Sure is. It's the kind of day you want to keep forever. You got that right. You come here often. First time. A friend told me this was a great place to come and relax and reflect. Do you come here often? Oh, just about every day. Even in winter? Oh, even in the winter. I just don't stay as long. What are you, one of those nature freaks or something? Well, yeah, or, or something. Well, i got to give you a lot of credit. Say, why and when did you start doing this? Hey, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have asked that question. I'm just a nosy old lady. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Three years ago, I retired as an office manager with an insurance company. Me and the wife planned a trip across the USA, do the whole country from uh, Niagara Falls to the Great Lakes and Yellowstone to uh, the California coast, then down through the Southwest and end up in Florida for an extended stay. Uh, went out and bought an Airstream and we're all set to go. Yeah, well, that's a long story. Right now I have to go down the street a ways to the coffee shop. Uh, maybe we'll see each other again. Maybe we will. Say, it's been nice talking to you. Say, I'm just going down the street a little. Why don't you come along? I'll have a cup of coffee. Maybe a donut. A lot of nice people hang out down there. Okay. Why not? Here I am. I come to the park all by myself. I've never met you, a complete total stranger that I have never met in my entire whole life. I don't even know your name. And by the way, Mr. Whoever you are, I'm Betty White with a Y, not an I. Well, nice to meet you, Betty White. I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, go on.